You and your camera have been literally everywhere on Earth, on top of Mount Everest and at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. You've seen the Nile River, Niagara Falls, the Sahara Desert, the Grand Canyon, and a million other beautiful places. On every trip, you brought back breathtaking pictures. Your album is already as thick as an encyclopedia, and it's time to discover a whole new world of tourism. Let's head on a voyage to Mars. You're sitting in a shiny modern rocket, counting down for takeoff. It might seem like a big deal, but with modern technology, it's practically a ride on a bus. In only a couple of hours, you're on the surface. It's time to head to the first destination for any tourist on Mars, Olympus Mons. It's the size of the entire state of Arizona and is 16 miles high. That's three times the size of Mount Everest. And it's the highest mountain in our entire solar system. It's actually even more than a mountain. It's a giant volcano. This entire mountain was formed when streams of lava rose to the surface, flowed down the volcano slopes, and slowly cooled. The freshest soil layers are about 2 million years old. So scientists don't rule out the possibility that this volcano will wake up one day. Hopefully, you're not close by when it erupts. And there are statues of Greek deities everywhere. There's Apollo, and there Athena and Artemis, and here's Zeus and Neptune. In the myths, these deities lived on Mount Olympus in Greece. These aren't natural, of course. We built these monuments to attract more tourists. There are even plenty of souvenir stalls where you can buy a lightning t-shirt in honor of Zeus. You take your first picture on Mars and move on to the next exciting place. This is a complex of 12 giant volcanoes. Some of them reach almost the height of Olympus. It's like if you piled 60 Empire State Buildings on top of each other. They're so tall because gravity is much weaker on Mars than on Earth. There isn't as much force pushing down on them, so they can grow much bigger than anything you could find on Earth. You feel lighter than you've ever felt before, and you can lift objects three times as heavy as you could back home. It's easy to see why the volcanoes are so big when you jump and fly nine feet into the air. These volcanoes have been erupting for almost two billion years. That's almost half the age of our home planet. That's another reason they've gotten so tall. Click, the photo is ready, and you get on the rover to explore the next landmark, Valles Marineris. This is the largest canyon in the world. It's longer than the distance from New York to Miami, and it's four times bigger than the Grand Canyon here on Earth. We don't know exactly how it came to be, but the most popular theory suggests that it was all because of the lava, which pushed the crust upward as it moved underground. Over time, these valleys grew into the enormous canyon of Valles Marineris. The next stop is Sidonia. The cool thing about this place is the giant rock with a human face. In 1976, we saw photos from the surface of Mars and could clearly recognize a human head here. People immediately came up with a thousand theories as to how it could have appeared here. The fun theorizing and speculation came to an end though, when new photos were taken in 2011. These clearer pictures showed that the eyes, nose, and mouth were just shadows that couldn't be picked out in the original low quality image. In fact, it's just a hill, a lot less exciting up close. Wear a warm jacket to view the next landmark spot. This is the North Pole. Make sure you keep a tight hold of your camera too. It's pretty windy out here. That ice that you see is carbon dioxide, which looks like that because of the extremely low temperatures. It can get cold here at negative 226 degrees Fahrenheit. This cold place and the North Pole are responsible for the strong winds all over the planet. And there are even geysers at the South Pole. In spring, when it gets warmer, jets of carbon dioxide rush to the surface, taking dust and sand with them. Quick, get it on your camera. Various studies say that there is an underground lake as wide as Delaware Bay, one mile beneath a thick layer of ice. Moving on to Gale Crater. This is where the Curiosity rover landed in 2012. Oh, and here is its replica. This little guy has been studying the surface of Mars for years, 
and has found signs of evaporated water. This means that Mars could have fostered life in the past. The rover also found a lot of evidence of organic molecules, as well as methane gas. It could come from microbes and other living things, but we don't know enough yet to say for sure. The existence of life on Mars hasn't been confirmed, but it's exciting to think that there could have been real Martians alive at some point. You take a selfie, like you're holding curiosity on your arm. Great, the Mars cab is already here for you, and you're heading toward Medusae Fosse. Many people believe that this could be an alien crash site because of the strange appearance of these rocks. Of course, that's not true. Scientists suggest that volcanoes have been erupting here for years. Lava has cooled into rocks, and strong winds have given them strange shapes. This entire volcanic deposit covers an area the size of a fifth of the United States. And here's a place that has made Earth scientists nervous and even scared. Hail Crater and these lines on the slopes. Studies have shown that this place was moistening, meaning that water could flow there. But then it was determined that it was dry sand streams. Scientists fear this place may be home to alien microbes, so you probably shouldn't get too close. Another mysterious place for tourists on Mars is ghost dunes. In the ancient times of this planet, there were dunes dozens of feet high. But then, they were flooded by water or lava. Their bases are preserved, but the tops have been erased. The covered areas of these dunes can still harbor microbes. Here, they are protected from wind and solar radiation and may still be preserved. Contact with them can be dangerous for humans, so you take a photo from afar. The next spot is on Mars's satellite, Phobos. Oh, there's a pretty big crowd of people gathered here. And then you see it, Phobos Monolith. It's a massive rock as tall as a 30-story building. We learned about this object from pictures taken back on Earth. The monolith casts a great shadow and has spawned many theories. For example, some claim that it was built by an ancient civilization or was left here by aliens. It might even have been a beacon. All these people came here to test the theory for themselves, but it just looks like a rock up close. One more photo and you have to hurry to the bus that will take you to Jupiter's satellite, Io. It's only safe to be here in special capsule cars that fly over the surface. And when you see volcanoes constantly erupting, you understand why. Jupiter's gravity compresses the insides of Io. They heat up and rise to the surface, erupting in volcanoes on its surface. They eject so much material that Io completely changes its surface every few millennia. Now we turn on the hyperdrives and head out into deep space. Here, in complete darkness, is the Voyager probe. It was launched in 1977 and is still in operation. It's the first human-made object to leave our solar system's borders and is the world's most distant spacecraft. Voyager carries a golden disk with a message for extraterrestrial civilizations. This amazing disk contains pictures of Earth's landscapes, people, animals, and various sounds and music. Unfortunately, it will take many thousands of years to reach the nearest star system, so we're not very likely to hear back from any aliens anytime soon. You take selfies and move on to the next part of the tour. Here, a thousand light years from Earth, is a black hole, the most mysterious and heaviest object in the universe. It weighs as much as the sun, but it's much smaller. It's so heavy that it attracts absolutely everything, even light. So the black hole isn't actually black. It has no color at all. You can only observe it from a very great distance because it bends time. The closer you are to it, the slower time will go. And if you want to fly just a second closer to it, weeks or even months might pass on Earth in that time. In the old tradition, you toss a coin into the black hole and continue your journey through the distant cosmos. On the way home, you have to stop by an iconic spot on the moon. Here in the Sea of Tranquility, there's an entire park near the landing site of Apollo 11. This is where the first human set foot on the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong's first boot print is still there on the surface as proof. 
It was made in 1969, but even now, it looks exactly the same. 